This is Bob Dickey, and welcome to another episode of Taking the Leap Podcast. My guests today are Jim and Kathy Pollan from Atlanta, Georgia. Jim and Kathy have been married for over 55 years and have two children, four grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Jim has his MBA in finance and marketing from Emory University and got his start in corporate America working for a multi-billion dollar international paper company as the manager of business, finance, and planning for an entire division. He also taught finance at Georgia State University in his spare time. Kathy also has a degree from Emory University, but she has one in chemistry, and she worked for the CDC, otherwise known as the Centers of Disease Control, in Atlanta, and was the editor and chemist at Monsanto. Both left their corporate jobs at the age of 28 to start their own business, which expanded to more than 10 countries in eight years, growing to $22 million in annual sales. At a business meeting a few months ago, Jim had a massive heart attack and was rushed to the hospital. The following conversation is us reliving that moment with both of them and learning what they learned from that experience. Let's jump right in. Well, Jim and Kathy Pollan, it's great to have you on the podcast today, and I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. There's a lot of things that we could dive in and start talking about, but the thing that I want to talk about that's most important to me is you guys have had somewhat of an exciting journey over the last few months. And I want, to, I want to tee up for our listeners what I mean by that, because some people might think, okay, well, Bob, there's been all sorts of exciting journeys. We've got the economy, and we've got politics, and we've got business. There's all sorts of things that are going on. But you personally have had an interesting journey, and I'll, I want to go back to what I remember. This is going back probably, this was in June of this year. We're at an event in out, right outside St. Louis, and I am about ready to walk on stage. I am backstage, and I'm getting my notes and my, my thoughts all prepared, and we've got a big audience out there. And I didn't know that you, you were literally sitting in that audience, and so I'm about ready to walk on stage and have a talk with a couple of people, and somebody walks up to me and says, Bob, Jim Paulin is out in the lobby and he's not doing well. And I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe he had, you know, Jim, maybe you had some indigestion. You, you, you had some bad eggs for breakfast. And then, then I find out, like, then the next moment, it's like, I'm, is he okay? What's going on? There's an ambulance coming to get Jim and take him to the hospital. I'm like, oh, my goodness, what in the world is going on? So my mind is like, I'm trying to like stay focused. Do I need to go to the hospital? And the next thing I know, I, I, I quickly, we, we finished the talk on stage. I, I get off stage and Cody Newton is with me. And we're like, we rushed to the hospital and come to find out you had had a heart attack literally right out there in the lobby of the hotel. And I just, it, it was like this shocking set of events for me to go through and then to rush to the hospital and make sure you're okay. But I want to, I want to ask you what's going through your mind. How did, how did this all unfold? And like, take us all the way back to the beginning, because I, re I really want to understand what you're thinking and processing as you're going through this life of life event. And by the way, can I, can I ask you how old you are? Well, you can ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the fourth quarter of the century. Okay, okay. Fourth quarter. Barely. <laughs> Just barely. Yeah, this would be a double seven right now. Okay. But, uh, no, I, I was anticipating you coming out on stage because we were in, like, the fourth row, sitting there with our notepads ready, mm -hmm. and the introduction was made, and, and uh, was, you know, I was really looking forward to, you know, what was going on, having my notes ready, and... Uh, and then, oh my gosh, I turned to Kathy and I said, I don't feel right. I think I'm going to go back up to the room. Uh, and at that point, everybody was, you know, standing and applauding. And the chairs, there wasn't a lot of room between mm. the chairs and the table to get out. Right. But I figured it'd be less conspicuous. I didn't want to create a scene. So while everybody's standing and clapping, I'm slipping out of the room. When you say you didn't feel right, what, what do you, what, like, was it dizzy or just like? You know, I don't know what. I don't know how. You could just tell. I could just tell something wasn't right. It, it just 
you know, I don't know what, I, I don't know how I would describe it, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Thinking back on it, was I just a little weak or uh, something was curious? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a chest pain or something like that. I, I started to get a little short of breath as I was walking down the hallway. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make it to the elevator, thank God. There was a, oh, yeah. a in the lobby, there was a, a, a sofa of sorts. And mm -hmm. I just kind of sat down and then kind of rolled over a little bit and laid there. And a hotel worker walked by and said, are you okay? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> you knew you didn't feel well. You knew something was going on. Yeah. And, and so at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, who do I contact? Who do I know? So one of our associates, Joe, he's, you know, trained and medic, fireman, volunteer. And, and I'm thinking, wow, this would be a great time to have Joe. So I get on my phone. And you're referencing Joe D'Arcangelo. He's yeah, a paramedic, yeah, firefighter. That's right. And I, I, I dialed Joe. In fact, just this morning I asked him. He said he listens to the message mm -hmm. regularly. And I said, could I have that message? So I left him a message. He didn't answer the phone. And I left a voice message. And, and let me see if it will come through. Oh, let's I, do it. Let's I, play I, it. I, I, so this is the message you left, Joe. Yeah, here it is. Let's see if it comes through. Hey, Joe. I'm in a lobby, Jim Pollard. I need your attention. Shortness of breath. Lightheaded and sweaty. Chest pains. Slight chest pains. Uh, that was it. That was a pretty weak message, but and it, that that's the last thing you said slight chest pains. And <laughs> yeah, you can right. you, you can hear your voice kind of trail off a little bit, yeah. like almost like you're going to sleep. No, I was out of breath. Uh, I, I couldn't breathe. I, I was like and I didn't have any pain, but it was just like hard to breathe. I mm -hmm. couldn't get oxygen, and uh, so Joe Joe came out and and uh, he had the he called the paramedics and he was asking if the hotel had oxygen and so forth and they didn't. They do hey, do you have aspirin? No. <laughs> anyway, Joe did a little pulse check and mm -hmm. so forth, and the paramedics came in and uh, as, as and Joe reminded me last night. He said. Uh, well, when the paramedics were there, they did the little uh, uh, heart check with you and, you know, listen to your heart and so forth. And they said, let's get him to the hospital. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like there wasn't any more things going to happen. We're going. We're going. And, um, I, you know, you hadn't even been notified yet. Kathy is sitting here with me, and she had, she didn't know what was going on. She was still in the meeting room, right? And... Um, so I was gone by the time you came out, right? Or I was still there? No, uh, I think Joe probably asked you where I was, and you said, oh, she's in the meeting. He said, well, somebody needs to go get Kathy. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Right. I came out, and what a shock to see my husband sort of laying down on the couch with all the EMTs around him. And when I got there, they were giving him nitroglycerin under his tongue, I think. Oh. And I'm wow. like, what? Is happening. I had no earthly idea, but I knew it was bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, one of the firemen or whoever it was came and said said to me, "Well, we're going to the hospital." I'm like, "We are, uh, okay." And I said, "Where's the hospital?" Like he wasn't offering for me to go. He's mm -hmm. like, "I'm like, where's the hospital?" He, he starts giving me directions, and I'm thinking, "Oh, no way am I driving to the oh, hospital." Right. So I said, "Okay, I'm going to get somebody." So I got one of our friends to take me. And uh, yeah. so did you follow the ambulance? They went and we let you followed the ambulance. Okay. I think Marlon said he was going about 90 miles an hour. Well, wow. he got away from us because right. we couldn't go that fast. Yeah, yeah. So when we got there, not long. It was close. Thank goodness. It yeah. was really close. Five the miles, right five around, miles right away. Right around the corner, right? Yeah. What was the hospital in St. Louis? Do you remember the name? Oh, my gosh. You're going to ask that. Uh, I know. I know. When we were talking with them, they were saying we were very fortunate that you were near that hospital because yeah, it was, they had uh, a good uh, cardiac uh, yeah. unit and all. Anyway, when we got there, he had already gone in, and she said, "Well, they, you can't go in yet, mm -hmm. um, but but I'll let you know." Mm -hmm. So when when she did come out, she said, "Well, you can go in and see him now." And uh, I started to go, and she said, "Well, you can bring one person with you." So I brought Judy, my mm -hmm. friend, with me. Thank goodness. We got into this little room in the emergency room. And uh, I still wasn't really processing this whole thing. I'm like, I guess he had a heart attack, but mm -hmm. no one said heart attack. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, maybe it's not, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and he's laying there when we get come into this room he's laying there and it did not hit me i mean when i really the worst thing this is the worst moment of my life mm -hmm. uh all all of a sudden there was just a couple people in there with him and he had you know was hooked up and all of a sudden all the lights started blinking and sounding it was code blue mm -hmm. and everybody started running in and my friend judy said she, her husband had a heart attack a couple mm -hmm. times she knew the ropes she said oh you don't want to see this they didn't make me go out make us go out she said you don't want to see this and she's bringing me over to the wall like let's turn away mm -hmm. and i you know i had to look and right. so here i saw my husband with them doing the chest compressions and the whatever the shock and um that's when you know we were both praying our hearts out i'm mm -hmm. like this is not like watching something on tv this mm -hmm. is this is real my life. husband right. and he could go and he, he could be gone or he could be right. you know that's just like in the he, last conversation you had with him you were sitting in a meeting he didn't he feel was, right he was right next to you yes. and you're thinking like hey honey i'll see you in a couple minutes yes. he's going up to the room he's gonna take a nap or whatever right. yeah. yeah so that that was it and then the next thing i heard it seemed like they were doing the chest compressions forever and then all of a sudden i heard him say well he's breathing that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy that's, be to hear that's that. better than the alternative. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so then they then they took him down to the heart cath lab where they did the heart catheterization. Were you about ready to have a heart attack yourself? I you was. Yeah. Like, take me. <laughs> Give me some chest compressions. Oh my word. Lord, I, I never bet. imagined I would be in that place yeah. where you see on TV the right. the person is waiting and they'd say, yeah. Get out of the room and mm -hmm. they start trying to bring right. the person back to life. I never thought that I would be the person and you know the wow. one that I love the most in the world could be gone and you're in a watching moment. you just don't think of that but yeah. I did know where where to turn mm -hmm. and I went straight to God and mm -hmm. just like begged right. you know just I'm praying. praying for his life mm -hmm. and God was listening so that's amazing yeah well I, for me it wasn't I, I mean, I just felt at peace the whole time mm -hmm. because I knew if, if it, the worst happened, I knew where I was going. Mm -hmm. And but you, you asked the question about the the uh, hospital, and I, I think it deserves credit. <laughs> yeah, let's give him a shout out for sure. It, it was called the DePaul Hospital SSM Health, mm -hmm. and uh, Doctor Azrak gets credit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the one that wow. made things happen for me, uh, but. And, you know, when, when we were in the ambulance, it was like a rough ride. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, you know, are we going to get there soon? And then next thing I know, the the doctor is, I, I, I just, I was kind of going in and out, I suppose, on mm -hmm. my comprehension. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the doctor saying something like, we're going to give you a little electric. And a little electric. I said, well, go for it. You know, <laughs> like, if that's going to help. I, you know, I, I didn't imagine what that meant. And um, anyway, was that painful when they gave? Is that, is that the paddles when they put the paddles on your chest and gave you a shock? I didn't. I wasn't even aware of it happening. Okay, you couldn't even. You, so, but you couldn't feel it. It was you. You're not like I wasn't conscious with, yeah. at that point. But you remember hearing it, like in the. I, I remember him telling me they were okay. going to do it, and that's the last thing I remembered. Wow. And, uh, and and then, but I tell you what, I do remember. The result of the chest compressions lasted for weeks yeah. mm -hmm. because, the, and I kept thinking, is this, is, am I having another heart attack? Mm -hmm. My ribs were so sore from mm -hmm. the compressions. Yeah. And uh, they didn't break any of your ribs? No. Wow, that's and, fortunate. Uh, I said something to, to, to Joe D'Arcangelo about that. I said, you know, they did these compressions. He says, it was a good thing I didn't have to do them for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know Jar Do it's Joe D'Arcangelo, he is a stout man. Yeah. He, is, he yeah. is a firefighter. He looks like he could play, uh, be a linebacker in the NFL. So, yeah. 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 And he, and he, he said, I would have really good enough. Yeah. Good yeah. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, but praise God he was there. Yeah, no kidding. And, um, so, you know, I, when they started going up in, the, the, the first they were just going to simply go in and look around and mm -hmm. see what was going on. And then when they had all this problematic situation. Then when they did go in, they found where there was a blockage. I think they call it the widow maker. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think I showed you the yeah, pictures. Yeah, you did. You showed me the picture, and it was it's and amazing. Uh, and so they put a stent in, 
and it shows you where the where the blood now flows, mm -hmm. where it was supposed to be and wasn't before. Right. And uh, you can see it looks like someone the previous. It looked like there was a dam. I mean, you can see a day and night difference between where the blood's flowing, and all of a sudden you just see it stop. Yeah, and, and now the flow is there, mm -hmm. and it's like wow, it's amazing. And so I, it took weeks to get even into cardiac rehab, mm -hmm. but but more interesting, just immediately. As a community of people mm -hmm. coming together afterwards, you know, we were in the hospital. I was for what four days, I think, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and and our friends Marlon and Judy Henry, they stayed over from the event and, mm -hmm. and stayed with us. And we let another couple take our car home, mm -hmm. and then we rode home with Marlon and Judy, uh, which was really nice of them to stay over and, mm -hmm. and, and take us home uh, after the departure from right. the hospital. Um, and it was great care at the hospital. They they were really great people, great, great physicians and the, the nurses and everything. So when when we when we uh, when we got home, then it was like, okay, uh, what what do I do now? And and it was like the rehab program was really promoted from mm -hmm. the hospital that that there in St. Louis. And there's a wait list to get on a cardiac rehab. It is wow. like there must be so many people having heart yeah. problems. Yeah. And uh, it took a number of weeks, eight, ten weeks to get in. And now you go three times. I go three times a week, spend an hour doing different exercises. You've got the, the um, heart monitor mm -hmm. on. They check in your uh, a blood pressure about two, three times before, after, mm -hmm. and during your exercise. Wow. And then I had an echocardiogram um, maybe a month ago, and, and you had to wait three weeks before you could go in to have, have the doctor tell you what really happened. And of course, I asked the technician, I said, are you allowed to tell me what you see? And she said, no. She said, but if there was, a, she said, if there was a problem, I wouldn't let you go. <laughs> I yeah. said, so I'm going home, no yeah. problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> And then when we got to visit the cardiologist, uh, well, Kathy, you asked the question, right? Yes. Um, he said, well, the echocardiogram is normal. And I said, does that mean there's no damage to his heart? And he said, yes, that's right. And I said, well, what restrictions does he have now? And he said, none. You can do whatever you want. Oh, wow. So, yeah, let me just keep this for a minute yeah. because I don't want to go past the... Um, to me, the most important realization that came to me out mm -hmm. of this, and or both of us that we've right. shared and people understand, was that um, God was in control of this heart attack. Mm -hmm. If he was going to have to have a heart attack, God was controlling it to be at this function mm -hmm. because the circumstances were so perfect with Joe being here mm -hmm. and being so close to the hospital. And that's critical when you have a heart attack. The quicker that they can take care of you, right the more chance that it's not going to be damaging to your heart. Well, we live in a town that's 45 minutes from the, from the hospital. Mm -hmm. And if we'd have had the heart, if he'd have had the heart attack at our home, um, it would have taken who knows how long to mm -hmm. get an ambulance. And then to get us to the hospital, mm -hmm. it would have been an hour or no, an yeah. hour and a half. Yeah. And he might not have made it right. or he might've had permanent heart damage, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I think it was orchestrated by God. And the other thing was, what I think about is we're among, I mean, you know, at home we're among family, but here we were also among family. Mm -hmm. Makes me want to mm -hmm. cry because mm -hmm. everybody was asking me how Jim was doing and saying, I'm praying for him, yeah. I'm praying for him the whole time yeah. we were here. And um, it was just a wonderful atmosphere of, hey, we're all together, we're right. praying for Jim. And yep. it's a business, but it's really a family. Right. It was amazing just to see the uh, the community rally around and, you know, people praying for you, com coming to support you. How can we help? And, you know, everybody was there, you know, concerned about you, Kathy, making sure that you were okay and Jim making sure you were okay. And just um, it, it, there was just so there was an outpouring of love and support of like, what do we got to do to help? Yeah. And and. You and Cody Newton made a special trip right over to the hospital. I was right there in the in the emergency room or wherever we mm -hmm. were, and I was very impressed that you guys came over and we prayed. And, yeah. and it was like, this is a special group of people. And it's like Kathy said, we're all family. Mm -hmm. And um, 
anything challenging to any one of us, we're all affected. And so, and as we all move forward and are successful, we're all successful. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's, we just love that. Just, it was, uh, yeah, it was so, it was heartwarming just to see the community rally around you guys and just the, the power of community, right? And having friends and family to just be able to, everybody lean in and be like, how can we help? And um, I want to go back and um, rewind a little bit though, and also hear maybe your, your feelings or your thoughts as you're laying on that couch. At some point, I mean, you're, you're cognizant, you're aware. And at some point, you've got to be thinking, okay, this is going from I'm not feeling well to this might be a little more serious than I realize, right? <laughs> are you able, like, did you, and, and then how, what are you thinking about when you're transitioning to the ambulance and then transitioning to the, the hotel, uh, not, not, not the hotel, the hospital? Um, are, are, are you starting to get fearful? Are you starting to do like I've heard people like when they're at the, these moments in life where all of a sudden their life is flashing between uh, before their eyes and you're like they're remembering and like are there people like that you're like oh, I, I want to say something to my wife or I want to say something to my son and daughter or I wish I would have done it. Like, what's going through your mind at that at that moment? All I can really remember was I want some oxygen. <laughs> you're just like I want to breathe. Get I got to be honest breathe. with you. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. I didn't have any of those lights flashing or for you know my yeah. history of my mm -hmm. whole life in front of my eyes or it just didn't happen. You were just very present, very yeah. present yeah. in the moment. Okay. And I, you know, I was at peace the whole mm -hmm. time. Uh, you know, I just knew that God was there and mm -hmm. Jesus was leading the way, so uh, I, I wasn't worried or concerned mm -hmm. about that. I was just I knew things were going mm -hmm. going to happen. Whatever they were going to be, it would be good. So, good. but um, that but the afterwards, looking mm -hmm. back, and we're just so glad of the different things we've done along the line mm -hmm. in our in our life to mm -hmm. to where we didn't. It's not like we're in a situation where oh my gosh, what are we going to do if we can't create income? Oh my gosh, what are we going to do if we have to figure out a different way to live life. Mm -hmm. What you know, none of that has been a problem or a challenge because of the preparation we've done along the line, mm -hmm. I guess, just trying to do little things to prepare yourself ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I think it's the habits that we live by every day that creates our life anyway. Mm -hmm. And and if you know, if you're doing the things that you feel that you should do and you're in, in it don't have regrets, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, right. no regrets. And um, so we're, we're happy about that. And I, I was telling Kathy this morning, I said, hey, you know, this inflation thing is really good because the cost of living, you know, the, the, the consumer price index going up. We're going to get a raise from the Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be 8.2 percent or something in January. Oh, that's <laughs> so, funny. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, at the same time, you're watching some of the stock market investments that you mm -hmm. got going on. And, mm, Okay, so I'm worried about saving a little money over here on taxes, but you know, you just lost fifty, eighty thousand over here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, still, it's like okay, that's that you prepared, you planned ahead, right. and you know, the opportunity that 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 we were able to take and consolidate from two houses mm -hmm. with a mortgage to one house with no mortgage, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah. you know, which was really a blessing yeah. not to have that over our heads it was perfect timing too when you guys did that you couldn't have timed it better absolutely yeah. absolutely well you, you you look when you're and go ahead and well before you pass it to kathy i want to ask you one more question and kathy hold, hold that thought because i know i can tell you've got something uh, very important <laughs> yeah. to say um you, you talked about jim when you look in the rear view mirror how happy you were of all the little things that you did right how you had prepared and it gave you a, a sense of peace at this point in your life that you had had the right habits, done the right things, and you were prepared to handle a type of situation like this. And so that's good looking in the rearview mirror. But I, I also want to know, did this event change you in any way, shape, or form? Did it, um, coming out of it, do you have a different, uh, any different viewpoints, any different feelings? Uh, are you motivated differently? Do you see life differently? Sometimes people go through a, a very traumatic event like this, and it's it like it impacts them. I'm just curious if you if, is there anything that's has it impacted you in any way? Yeah, well, I I on a daily basis I uh, always want to have more hugs. I say mm -hmm. I've got a hug deficit going on mm -hmm. here, and so we're doing that on a regular basis. <laughs> good man, good <laughs> that's man. That's just me. <laughs> and uh, 
you know, it's like uh, you, you, your time is precious, and mm -hmm. so you're trying to figure out, okay, what are the things that you can do to impact the upcoming generations, mm -hmm. not our family, but everybody, but especially our family. And, um, you know, we've, we've just been blessed with a brand-new great-grandchild uh, that was in June, about a week after, yeah, right right after the event that mm -hmm. I had. And so uh took a little while before they could get to see, I get to see the baby at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, even even at two months or three months old, he's wearing six-month clothes. So it's like, this boy's going to be big. He's going to play, play for Georgia. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but, Are you guys Georgia fans or Georgia Tech fans? Oh, we follow Georgia. Okay. We, our, one of our grandsons graduated from Georgia Tech, so that works too. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're both great schools. <laughs> Oh, now, Kathy, I know you had something on the tip of your tongue there you wanted to, to get in there. Well, you mentioned, you know, the looking back on being prepared. And mm -hmm. I, I just remember times when, you know, we weren't maybe that making that much extra money, mm -hmm. but it came time to put, like at the end of the year, put money into the Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. And I remember arguing with him saying, well, we can't afford to do that. You know, mm -hmm. and he said, no, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And every year he did that so that when the time comes, when you retire, you have a great nest egg, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that because I would have never had the courage mm -hmm. to do that when it's you know you want that money to live on, but right. we also want to put it put right. it for the future. And I think a lot of people don't do that, and then they're at our age and trying to figure out how they can get a second job or right. whatever. But Having that discipline early is so yes. important, and I, and I know it's like at the time it's like oh, but we could use this for the vacation or a new car. There's always need, right? Yeah. But if you don't squirrel that away. And it grows. The earlier you do, I see all these calculators that say if you invest this and then in your 20s and 30s, what it will equal when you're, you know, 65 and 70 versus if you start when you're 45 or 50. I'm trying to teach that to my six kids. But guys, compounding interest is it, it. This is a real thing. Here's how it works and start start at an early age. And so you guys certainly have a, a yeah. great testimony on how you've done it. And you know, it's you've that done very, very well. And I also when I look back at our life and think about um thankful thankful that jim um when right after we got married and he decided this job isn't for me and mm -hmm. we decided to you know get involved in a community type business where we could offer income opportunities to other people and build mm -hmm. a build a community that way and that we've done that our for 50 years we've done that with varying companies um but when I think of the friendships that we formed in mm -hmm. all those companies that we could look back, a lot of people stayed with us the whole 50 years, and those that didn't, we can look back and call them, and they'll always say, thank you so much for giving mm -hmm. me the opportunity to be in business with you. You know, it was, mm -hmm. a, good, it was a good time, and, you know, we still love you, and mm -hmm. we love them through every company we've ever been involved in, which just says a lot for the type of business that we've been in our whole life and how much... Our faith has grown, what we've learned about leadership, what we've learned mm -hmm. about marriage, just through that, where we would have never learned that through right. having a job. So yeah. I just have to say that because we appreciate the life we've lived and the opportunities that it's given us. Like Jim said, we don't have any regrets because mm -hmm. we've traveled the world and we've seen so much and we're just so thankful. Mm -hmm. You know, God's been with us all along and we basically thankful to him for leading us in that direction, mm -hmm. which we just stayed in. Even when maybe it wasn't working, we stuck with it and stuck with it. And, well, well the next person will, won't say no. The next mm -hmm. person will, you know, mm -hmm. want to be part of our team. So that's been, uh, that's been our life, and we love it. Well, that's great. Well, it's like recently, I remember even telling our, the, uh, the parents, our grandson, the parents of the new grandson, the great grand, the parents of the new great grandson. I was telling his father, uh, which is our grandson, hey, now's the time to get insurance. You can buy insurance, life insurance, when you don't need it. Mm -hmm. You can buy health insurance when you don't need it. You can't buy health insurance when you need it, and it's too late when you're gone to buy life insurance. Yeah. So you know you, you do these things when you can do them, and then look to the long term. As far as I mean, my grandfather actually was an insurance salesman really? and he bought a policy for me that I still have 
Wow. I still have it. I still pay on it because, you know, there's a little bit of sentimental value there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that whatever it was, maybe $10,000 77 years ago, it, it is, you know, it's a lot bigger now. It's mm-hmm. like a whole life policy, like an investment. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, they're just little things that, that make a difference for the long term that people don't think about. It, yeah. You know? It's all those little things that people are so that you said they don't think about because they're so busy, and you know, and I think that one of the things that I appreciate about you guys is that you are lifelong learners, and so even at your stage of life, there's a lot of people be like, eh, I've been there, I've done that, I've learned it, I'm just I'm I'm retired, and but you guys still have a voracious appetite to learn, and even more important is you have a voracious appetite to be able to teach people of what you have learned, right? You've got a, de- a desire and a mission to be like, okay, all the things that we've learned, all the, the challenges that we've gone through, the, the obstacles that we've overcome, the victories that we've had, it wasn't just for us, but how do we pay it forward to our kids, our grandkids, uh, to young people around us and, and, and give them insight to where they can have a better life. And so uh, on that note, I'd love to hear, um, so imagine you have a, a, a microphone and you're talking to a, a large audience of young people. They're, maybe they're in their 20s or 30s. They're, just, they're fresh out of college or they're just, uh, they're just starting their career. I'm, think, I'm thinking of my daughter who just graduated from the University of Tennessee and just starting her career. What are some life nuggets that you would offer them saying, hey, these, these are some of the things that I learned in my career? These are some of the things that I hold near and dear to me. That I, these are principles that have helped me be successful in life. What would you say to that that group of people? Well, the first thing I would say was, it took me about a month to prepare for that ten minute talk. <laughs> 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 because yeah. that's just the way I am. Yeah. yeah. And but I, I will say this: the fact that we have done something together mm-hmm. during our marriage has made a huge difference. In other words, I I looked at where I started working at the corporate world. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a nice big job offer and took it to the corporate headquarters. Because you're you're trained as a CPA, correct? Uh, No, not all all close. Financial planning. Financial planning, okay. Yeah, and a master's in finance and marketing. Okay. And, um, but I, I went to work for a big corporation and was exposed to the what they called a president's office Mm -hmm. for a billion dollar company. And I was able to interact with them and Mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Anyway, long story short, it didn't take about two months working at this corporate job to realize, you know, I'd really rather be on my own. Mm -hmm. You want to be my own boss. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, I don't like being told what to do. And, uh, but anyways, I moved along with them and then got a promotion and we got moved back to Atlanta where we wanted to be. Mm And, uh, and, and then I started looking at my boss there, and I'm thinking, you know, he's got financial problems, he's got marital problems. and He's unhappy. Yeah, and, yeah, and I'm thinking, is this, this is my future here or something look like that? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the guy had been around 20, 30 years, mm-hmm. I don't know. And so, again, I'm reconfirming, i got to find something to do on my own. I, we didn't have a lot of money to invest in anything. I didn't invent anything. And, uh, you know, and along comes somebody that I went to school with and respected uh, and says, hey, I got an idea we can make X amount of dollars in, in our spare time. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm already teaching college at night, three nights a week. I'm working full time during the day. We got a new baby at home and he's talking about spare time. But I said, if you can really make that kind of money, I'll figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I came home and told Kathy what I, my new venture idea, mm-hmm. uh, being an entrepreneur in a community building event. This was, what, what, that, what when was this, in the 70s, 80s? Yeah, 70s, yeah. 70s. So yeah. you were participating in the gig economy before the gig economy was even a thing. You you're, got it. Exactly right. We know exactly what that is. <laughs> yeah. so, and so you're starting a part-time venture, starting a business, becoming yeah. an entrepreneur in the 70s. Yeah. Working from home. Working from home. And uh, trying to fit it in. And, you know, with skills that I needed to develop Mm because I didn't have them. What was the number one skill that you were trying to develop that you needed to be successful in this? Basically contacting people and and talking to people about an idea that could better their life and something that they could use in their home to, you know. So interpersonal skills, communication skills, things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're world class at communicating. 
And I would say you, you and Kathy both are unbelievable at just relating with people. I mean, you're just, you're, you're op- likable, right? But you know how to have conversations with virtually anybody. I haven't m- met a person that'd say, well, this person w- wouldn't love Jim and Kathy Paul. <laughs> I mean, you guys are, you, you make friends with anybody. So I think that's a skill set that you've learned. You know, I, I just, I assume that that was just something that was part of your nature, but no. back in the seventies, that wasn't you. This is no. something that you've learned I, over time. I was Mr. Detailed stick in, you know, on a paperwork. Oh, so you're the accountant guy. Like, yeah. I just like, I like my spreadsheets and my numbers. Leave me alone. That's right. You got it. You got it. But, but I mean, I'm just thinking like last week I go up to the pool and spa place to get my water tested for our hot tub. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing there and the Bobby, the owner is talking to this other guy and they're just i'm thinking i'm going to be a while waiting for this guy and anyway i'm kind of overhearing what's going on and he's saying well i got the pool and i'm doing this and that and i'm building this new house and and the more he talked and and i and i and he i said where do, where are you building that house and he said off of war hill and i said i think you might be my new neighbor and so i just shook my hand out and i said i'm jim and he said i'm brent and sure enough he's building a house right three what a couple hundred couple hundred yards from our house wow <laughs> and and he, he's he and during his conversation with the pool guy he hadn't moved in yet yeah. december's their goal he said something about yeah i talked to some guy about uh solar shingles and he told me it'd be a 35 year payback or something like that i mean this is just out of the blue mm-hmm. and i'm thinking you know i and so I said to him, I said, you know what? I just finished a class on solar. I think I could get you a free quote on solar. Would you be interested? He said, well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, this is like made in heaven. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, I like to talk to people now. Yeah. And, and I, really all I do is ask questions. I don't do a lot of talking normally. That's why I'd rather you ask all the questions. <laughs> but, just, just ask questions and listen, right? Yeah, it, that's really all you have to do, and it really works. And uh, focus on other people and learn about what they want to do, what their needs are, and how you can help them. And uh, it's, it's just a, I love doing that. And it, we compliment each other real mm-hmm. good because Kathy would rather listen. <laughs> yeah. So you could go, going back to my question with you guys, you, you we, you, you started off the, the piece of advice that you were going to give young people was the fact that you, you looked ahead and you saw people in your life that were not happy on that career path. And you're like, I want to do something different. And you guys started building a life together and doing a business together. So that was one piece. And then you talked a little bit, another data point uh, that you talked about was, uh, becoming, you know, learning these skills, becoming better in personal skills and communication, things like that. Is there anything else that you would share with young people, a little tips or pieces of advice? Yeah, I would say the self-development mm-hmm. has been the main key to our success for living together, mm-hmm. a happy 55 years now. Is that right? Have I got 55, that right? wow. Yeah. And, um, and, and so the fact that we've been focused both usually reading the same books mm-hmm. You know, and and doing things together makes a big difference. You watch families where the wife goes to work over here and the husband works on a profession over there and they, you know, they don't do a lot of things together. Next thing you know, it's like they're not together. Mm -hmm. And so I I really, I think we've been blessed by that. It was kind of like a little extra insurance Mm -hmm. to make sure we're thinking the same. As Uh, much as possible, you guys have tried to do life together. Yeah. And uh, so that, that makes a huge difference, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, to, to, to get people on the same page where, you know, you get common goals. We have uh, discussions about, what we, you know, like we're talking about what we want to do for Thanksgiving. And, you know, we're saying, well, you know, those cruise ships are offering some great deals right now. Yeah. And, yeah, but, you know, you might have to get some medical attention to do that. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I'd say just, you know, if, if people set goals, short-term goals, long-term goals, and and then take them step by step, one day at a time, and um, stay focused. Get mentors in your mm-hmm. life, obviously, mm-hmm. that you can get counseling and guidance from. I mean, we just love going to our, our church and our pastor and the message. You know, it's like you fill up your tank every week. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's important, I think. And at the same time that you, you're staying busy, 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 but you got to keep the priorities straight. 
You, you know, you can get off track. There's so many things that demand your time nowadays. I'm I'm not a big fan of social media. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't engage a whole lot in it. Kathy lets me know if there's something I need to know or see. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but I, I, to be honest with you, I got into it one time. I'd come out of it about three, four hours later, and I'm thinking, I don't think I'm good for this. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Kathy, I don't think I'm feeling so well. I'm going I'm to go upstairs and take a nap. <laughs> I, I did that once again the second time. I thought, wow, just stay away from yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't need to know all that stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you strike me, as we're talking, obviously I know you pretty well, but you also strike me, uh, not only as a person, but as a couple, that um, you enjoyed the process. And you, 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 you know, throughout the, this conversation, you keep talking about being methodical, being disciplined, taking the proper steps. It just kind of reminds me of that childhood story of the tortoise and the hare. And you, you strike me as a couple that you were the tortoise. And you're not, you, you, you weren't like rushing here, rushing there, and, uh, but you were enjoying the process. You're very disciplined, methodical steps, and you've won the race. And, and I, I see a lot of times... Uh, juxtapose that maybe attitude and philosophy of life with maybe some young people today. I think and it, not just this generation, but I think there, every generation, there is an energy and an exuberance with young people of, I want to do this and I want to do that. And there's the fear of missing out. And I want to have my success today. And, you know, the, the instantaneous and uh, instant gratification culture that we have. And that can lead you down some really bad paths and, and, and create, um, maybe uh, bad habits and you guys look like you have lived life completely different. Are you, is that an inaccurate statement? And if, and if so, could you tell me a little bit about your philosophy on that? I, I think it's a very accurate statement, very good assessment on your part. Um, basically, I, I, you know, I've always had kind of the attitude, well, if somebody can do it, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, you, you show me how and I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a matter of, a determination uh, in my I remember my grandfather tell me well if you're gonna do something do it right or not at all mm hmm and that's always stuck with me and uh, you know things of that nature that even little projects you know either I'm gonna do it right or I'm not gonna do it at all but so I end up putting a lot of stuff off till I can do it just right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like that <laughs> but, no, I mean it's, it's 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 a lot of a lot of projects that yeah. you would like to do and but you got other things you got to do right. so more important but uh, you no know, that's a, that's a that's a fair statement I mean Kathy's a little more like let's go let's get her done are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like it's a good balance then, yeah, Kathy. What do you think? If, so you're, you're more the engine. He's more the brake. And, but you guys have together, you've made it, you made it work, and you haven't crashed the car. No, we haven't. He's the rule follower, and I'm the rule breaker. <laughs> really? I oh, oh, yeah. did not know this about oh, yeah, you. Yeah. All right. So I don't know. But, no, I think that, um, you know, just thinking of your question about the young people, mm -hmm. and I was thinking exactly what you were saying you know, sometimes an opportunity comes their way and it mm -hmm. just sounds so good. Mm -hmm. They they forget to step back and pray about it and mm -hmm. ask God and ask a mentor, is mm -hmm. this the right way? And mm -hmm. is this going to keep, am I going to keep my character the way I want it to be? Mm -hmm. Am I going to keep my integrity uh, by doing this? Or is there is there a little bit of a hazy thing there that I have mm -hmm. to worry about? Because if they just push that aside and go forward, then 10 years down the road, they're like so sorry that, mm. you know, they've um, just gone the wrong path, like you said. But one thing about Jim, I think anybody that's ever known him, one of the first words that will come to their mind is integrity. Mm -hmm. He's a man of integrity, and he doesn't compromise mm -hmm. that. And he's, you know, his character is solid. And I think that's the best we can do. Maybe we're not reaching the pinnacle of success as quick as we want to, but we're doing it the way God wants us to do it. We're mm -hmm. at the pace that we're supposed to be. He's lead, we're following his leading the whole way, and that's what we've done. And so we don't have to look back with any regrets. You mm -hmm. know, we're just uh, thankful. We're right. so thankful, really. Yeah. You know, we that's... could have gone the wrong path, but we mm -hmm. didn't. Yeah. Well, I, I think one of the things that has helped us tremendously is the fact that like we have this book of the month mm -hmm. that you're involved in helping picking out a lot of those and the leaders pick out mm -hmm. and um, you know the information that comes down we we have a little regular 
book club in our mm -hmm. group it's people that want to read it and the others that don't want to read it but they want to listen in on the right. discussion about right, it yeah. so and we welcome them all uh but that challenges us again on a weekly basis oh hey that's a different take on this thought and you know that's an interesting approach we mm -hmm. hadn't thought of it that way mm -hmm. you know like the, the the limping leader is that what it's called the yeah. leading with a limp leading yeah. with a limp mm -hmm. is yeah. like that's a kind of a twist on things mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but it, it, it's great the the way you get different opinions and different thoughts from the different books mm -hmm. it's it's an amazing thing and but but i got to go back to some of the basic ones that affected us early on yeah which are those you know and simple little things like the magic of thinking big okay. who would have thought mm -hmm. that a simple thought process like that could make a huge difference and uh but you know that's the next one that that's right that you know napoleon hill right. mm -hmm. i just fell in love with that book i mean that changed your life yeah that changed your life oh absolutely yeah. absolutely think you think and grow rich napoleon hill yeah, all those books mm -hmm. all those basic, how to win friends and influence people that's what yeah. you're referencing yeah. yeah just great books that mm -hmm. that you know give you a foundation and that the, all those people skills that you need to have just to live mm -hmm. uh, and and live happily with you know interactions with your spouse your family your business associates your neighbors whoever right you know it's awesome it's really great and really you know you guys you and cody mentioned this when you came to visit jim mm -hmm. i mean how many people have the ceo and the top income earner of their company come to the hospital but uh mm -hmm. you mentioned that okay, God has more for you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you survive something like this, when you're code blue and they're, you know, you're between death and life mm -hmm. and God decides to bring you back, you know, he, yeah. you know he has something important left for you to do. So I have to keep reminding Jim of that. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I, oh, I, I remember standing there in, in, in there and, you know, Cody and I were wanting to give you words of encouragement and we prayed for you and, you know, the, I just, it was, it was on my heart to just let you know how much, I mean, Everybody, we were back at the hotel, back at the convention center. Everybody was praying for you. You had the whole community rallying around. And it was important for me to convey that message, you know, that everybody was praying for you, Jim, thinking, thinking about you. And, um, it, w and it was obvious to me that you still have a, a very important mission. Um, and we, we don't know what that is, right? But we know that each and every day that we're given another uh, day of life, another breath in our lungs that God's got something important for each and every one of us to do. I'm a firm believer in that. And just sitting there, actually I was standing there, standing there over your bed and looking at you, I just wanted you to know, it's like, Jim, you have got an important mission ahead of you. You've got people that love you, care about you. You've got, we've got a next generation in this country that need to hear the words of wisdom that, you know, you are so passionate um, to tell them, uh, to mentor them, to help them have success. Um, you know, as you were growing up as a, a little boy, uh, both you and Kathy, yeah, I know I, I learned about these things in a history book because you're older than me, right? But you were, <laughs> you, I, I know that we were, you, you guys were blessed to live at a time when America was at its absolute zenith and uh, it, amazing economic prosperity. Of course, we had challenges. There's always challenges in the, you know, the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and every season of life, and it, uh, there's challenges. But there was certainly um, America was at, at its prominence, right? And you were growing up through those, uh, through those times and your career was during those times. And, but you know, we take a look at where we're at right now in the world and there's economic challenges in front of us you know, we've got, you know, a war in the Ukraine. Um, you know, we have politicians that are openly talking about that this is the closest we've ever been to nuclear war since the Cuban Missile Crisis. We've got economic challenges on the home front, social challenges. The economy is you know, not perfect. We've got inf rising inflation. These are all pressures that a young generation who are graduating high school, graduating college, they're entering their career, and they're facing pressures and challenges that we haven't seen in quite some time. And uh, one of the things that my dad's always taught me, he said, Bobby, you know, surround yourself with men and women who have got gray hair and, and seek their wisdom. They've, they've lived life. 
they know they know things you don't know and ask them questions and seek wisdom. And so it's one of the reasons. Mm. I mean, this the, this conversation here for, is very selfish because I want <laughs> I, for me because I'm just I'm sitting here talking to two people. I'm asking you guys questions just for me. I want to yeah. learn from you guys. Mm. But I also realize that anybody else who's listening to this uh, will be will benefit from the, the the nuggets and the wisdom that you're passing on. And to make the, the go full circle back to me standing next to your bed and saying, Jim, you've got a mission is just think about how many young people need the wisdom that you have. Think about all the people that need that mentorship, that encouragement, I, not just mentorship. But I just want to say this again, the encouragement, young people need to be encouraged that there's hope, there's possibility that the best days of America are not behind us, but actually in front of us. And yeah, we've got some storms, but guess what? We've always had storms. And, we're, and we, we've always figured out, the American people have always figured out a way to navigate that, and to have opportunity. Um, and I, you know, knowing you, you love this country, and you love um, the America, you love its people, and uh, I, just, I see that as you, know, you paying it forward to the next generation is something that you have done uh, and that you're going to continue to do. Mm. I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, well, I appreciate your challenge to me while I was laying there because I accept the challenge and, uh, I, you know, patriotic. Yeah. I mean, I had to replace the American flag on our dock because it was looking a little shabby. Mm -hmm. And then when I put it up, I'm thinking, you know, you're supposed to take these down every night unless you got a light on them. How could I get a light out here? So I went and I got one of those solar panel lights mm -hmm. and I got a light on my flag at night. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm proud of you. I'm probably one of the few out there with a flag light. Lit well, up. That, that's you being the rule follower. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. You got it. That's exactly right. Well, I remember one of the, you talk about everybody praying for us. We had such a network of people mm -hmm. and, and, and even this weekend we're seeing a lot of those people again. How mm -hmm. you doing? You're looking great. And, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's totally awesome. But, I'm reminded of the time we were on a cruise ship and we stopped in uh, the Bahamas and a bunch of us guys, half a dozen of us said, let's, let's get some mopeds right around the island. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing that, just the guys, thank God. And uh, the, the guy in front of me kind of caught the edge of the pavement and, and he fell down. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to run over him. And of course, they weren't the best brakes in the world, and it's not something I was doing on a weekly basis, riding a motorbike. <laughs> and but so rather than run over him, and rather than running head on to a car, you know, because they ride on the wrong side of the right. road down there, I had to go to the left. Well, on the left is a concrete wall, and I hit it smack dab on head on the head, oh my gosh. and a little cheap helmet I had on. <clears throat> but long story short, I ended up with three compression fractured vertebrae. And, and in the hospital, Kathy found out about it. She had to get off, check out of the cruise ship, what was the first day or two, with the other guy's wife, mm -hmm. uh, because he had gotten injured as well. We shared the hospital room together. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but by the time I got home after a week of this, um, they had never diagnosed my broken back. And when I got home to Atlanta, they said, you have a broken back. And, and they said, they can't believe you've been walking on this and whatever. Long story short, I had like the better part of a year for rehab. And they were going to have to do surgery because I had lost my, my vocal cord was paralyzed. And they were going to take something out of it somewhere else, part of my body, and put it in there. And, and then they, they had a, a bone spur going into my spinal column which was causing my legs to tingle and it was a risky thing they were going to do surgery on that and we had an event similar to this with a lot of people and we had prayer and uh, the next time i went back to the doctor to schedule the surgery he did the x-rays he says you don't need the surgery and it's like i took the paperwork that the doctor wrote because i had to change doctors and i was reading the doctor's paperwork mm -hmm. when I went to the next doctor and it says patient has had miraculous recovery. So it was a miracle. My voice came back, yeah. no surgery. My yeah. back didn't have any paralyzation going on, no surgery. And uh, so give God the praise for that wow. and the praise for being here today. That's amazing. Uh, God gets the glory.
Well, you, you guys have a track record of Jim getting into some situations and Kathy coming to the rescue. Yeah, right. <laughs> and she stayed with me. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so, Jim, we need to like, we need to like, um, uh, maybe make, let's let's make Kathy's life over the next couple of years not so exciting. How about yeah, that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Like, yeah. Okay. That's right. Good excitement. Like good excitement. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, let's see. We're as we're kind of drawing near on our time. You and I've got a, a few things that we've got to do together with the the team that we have here assembled. And um, where, where are we at? We're in Independence, Missouri. So, uh, final questions. You've given some great recommendations on. Uh, books that, that have been meaningful to you in your life and uh, you've given some great recommendations for young people who are starting out and things maybe for them to think about and focus on um, parting words of wisdom is, is there anything that you'd like to share of maybe looking back on, in your life are there things that you have uh, you know any re you, you said earlier you didn't have any regrets so I won't won't ask you that but are there things that maybe you did that you was like hindsight being 2020 well you know that you wish that you hadn't done or, you know, uh, uh, choices that you wish you had made? Is there any other just parting words of wisdom for young people? I just want to make sure I'm squeezing out every salient yeah. nugget. Well, anybody that's younger than me is a young person. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's including a large portion of the U.S. population. <laughs> so, so I would say uh, if, if you're planning on moving from where you live to a retirement home, mm -hmm. whatever, if it's in the mountains, if it's on the beach, or if it's on a lake, or wherever it is, okay. don't wait until you're uh, in your late 60s or beyond to do it. Go ahead and do it earlier on when you're healthy, real healthy, and energetic, and, and it doesn't sidetrack you a whole lot. You can stay focused and then and then really enjoy the community. The, that uh, a whole lot longer right. than waiting until you make last minute decisions. I think and we would have done that sooner. Gotcha. I think we that's would great have, advice. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we had a lake house getaway, mm -hmm. but we never just decided to live there until mm -hmm. like four years ago. And so when we made the consolidation from the two houses to the one, mm -hmm. then we said, okay, we're going to live there. And that's been a blessing, but I would have done that sooner, mm -hmm. you know, knowing how great it is now. And I mean, it, it's probably not a day that goes by. I don't say, hey, let's go take a boat ride, you know. Oh, yeah. I've seen pictures. It's, you, you guys can tell you can just having a lot of fun out there. It's great. Yeah. It's awesome. But uh, and, and the other thing is, you know, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you keep that really counts for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you can just kind of always save some, put some aside, and uh, don't touch it, mm -hmm. you know, especially you can take advantage of these Roth IRAs, other mm -hmm. retirement funds, whatever you got advantage, take advantage of it. And uh, I remember early on when that, before the Roth even existed, they had a financial planner set up a profit sharing plan just so we could do some of that mm -hmm. stuff on our own just as entrepreneurs. Uh, but all that really has paid off in the long run. That's great. And uh, so that, you know, good good financial uh, principles pay off for the long term for sure that's great advice the only thing i can think of when you're talking to young people is i mean we have two grandchildren that just got married within mm -hmm. the last couple of years and i would just say be willing to work on your marriage mm -hmm. it's not just going to be all roses just because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've had a wedding you know it takes work and um trust and uh i mean i'm in a international Bible study now where um, there's a woman there in India and from all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. and it just so happens that I think three of the ladies that are in there are now in marriage problems going mm -hmm. through counseling and I'm mm -hmm. thinking wow you know be willing to go to counseling mm -hmm. whether you're think you have problems or not because uh, there's so many things that can go wrong in a marriage right. and there's far too many divorces right. that could be avoided mm -hmm. if people would just seek God more, love each other more, under, try to understand. And, you know, as far as I was concerned, I had to have trust in Jim, all of his decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were right and he was mm -hmm. good. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm like we say, I'm just opposite. So I would say, well, I have an idea. But mm -hmm. then eventually I just trust him. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to do that when you're married. Somebody mm -hmm. has to be the head. Right. And... Um, you know, I guess I learned that 
through our years in the business of how to uh, look at marriage and how to be the be the wife that supports her husband. Mm -hmm. So books are great for that. Yeah. I, every young married couple should read books on keeping their marriage alive, mm -hmm. I think. That's such great advice, Kathy. And you know, it's some advice that uh, just to echo that, echo that point. Um, some mentorship advice I got from a, a mentor early in my career, because uh, you're, you know, and, and Jim, you'll like this as a uh, an investment professional, right, and financial planner. But he said, Bob, you want to know how to avoid a fifty percent bear market? It's like don't get divorced, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And uh, and he said that the number one thing you can do as you're as you're building your career and building wealth is to make sure you are investing. Hey, congratulations, investing in financial things invest in your marriage it will pay off dividends and to your point kathy is so smart of you to bring this up that even though jim you're sitting next to a beautiful woman that you've been married to for 55 years and you in your mind know without a shadow of a doubt that you married the best woman on planet earth and i'm sitting here amen yeah and i'm sitting i'm sitting here my wife is upstairs and i think in my mind i know in my mind i married the best woman on planet earth and we can believe that and it is true, but guess what? It doesn't mean that life is going to be simple and easy. You still have to work at it. You still have to learn and grow. And I had um, a buddy of mine, he was like, Bob, how much are you investing every year in executive education? Continue to, for you to become a better CEO, for you to become a better leader. I, mean, I, you know, I was giving him, and he goes, how much are you investing in marriage counseling for you to become a better husband, a better father? And it was just like, boom. I mean, he hit me right <clears throat> between the eyes. He's like, Bob. You're investing money to become a better leader, better CEO. Make sure you're investing money to become a better husband, a better father. And so Brandy and I, as soon as Brandy and I, we thought, oh, we've got a perfect marriage. It's amazing. It's wonderful. We've taken our marriage to uh, other levels of understanding and intimacy and togetherness by investing and going and learning how to communicate better, have, learning how to have our own language, right? To have the own, and I've learned more about her by going through. It's been so fascinating. I'm like, and I've been married, you know, 28 years, right? So, um, I don't know, I, Kathy, that was such wonderful, timely advice for young people. Invest in your marriage. It is so, uh, so important. Jim, I can tell you've got something on the tip of your tongue. Well, we, we, we have a friend that's going through divorce, and, you know, we've tried to talk him through different ideas and approaches and getting counseling and, and he's all for it, but the wife is not. And, you know, it's unfortunate that just last week the papers were served, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I see, you know, what he's going through and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, what in the world would you, how could you let that happen? Mm -hmm. And, and it comes back to what you were saying you know, I got the best wife in the world, but so do you, mm -hmm. because it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. And you don't put yourself in a position where you could be readily distracted. Mm -hmm. You don't take another woman in a car with you on a road trip, mm -hmm. you, you know, with just the two of you. You mm -hmm. just don't do those things at any cost. You avoid that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, if you, you know, that you're human and you're going to have distractions but you have to control it like mm -hmm. uh, you know no i'm not going there i'm not mm -hmm. interested right. and and but it's a choice yeah. and, and like you say you made the choice to improve and get better and and i think that's the benefit of all the personal development program that we've been mm -hmm. exposed to yeah. the the hundreds of books and the classes and the and the seminars and mm -hmm. it's like wow this is great stuff and you know whether it's Cutting up the grapes for have little groups of grapes, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've learned, learned things like that at a yeah. at a seminar. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. So I cut up the grapes. And yeah. <laughs> well, you said hundreds of books. I would venture to bet it's been thousands of books. I'm for sure. You guys. Yeah, thousands in, of books. In fact, we we've got a room that's supposed to become a uh, a library, and we got these bookcases. That are yet to be assembled. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's 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 amazing, you know, the number of uh, exposures we've had to great mm -hmm. ideas, and mm -hmm. you know, and then it's a choice to use them or not, and, and take them and apply them. And so we've just really been blessed, and we're excited to be a part of what you're doing and and what the team's doing. And you know, something you said yesterday reminded me. You know, some people say. Oh, you know, you're doing those little things like that. And, and I got to thinking, you know, we've got people in this business 
that are from professional backgrounds, engineers, um, people that have all kinds of different uh, degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, I, you know, I know doctors that would love to be successful in our business. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody in our business that wants to be a doctor, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> but yeah. I, I, the, the adaptability, mm -hmm. the thought process that people in our community actually have developed lend it to doing amazing things mm -hmm. because it and i thought back about how i was attracted by this away from the corporate life mm -hmm. it was i wanted economic and professional freedom mm -hmm. i wanted the ability to make my own choices i wanted the ability to determine my own income mm -hmm. i wanted the, the ability to go where we wanted to live and do what we wanted to do and i didn't know where else you could find that mm -hmm. and i still don't this is the this we got it we got the best of the all worlds well i think that's a, a great place for us to end this podcast i i think of the the quote uh, i heard it recently someone saying that you know the the uh, the life that you want is, is easily obtained by getting new information and, and you guys have you've talked about today you've uh, the information that you gleaned when you started your career all the way back in the 70s starting your entrepreneurial career before the gig economy was a thing and you went out and you sought after mentors, advice, read books, developed. Uh, you, you got new information to help you make new career choices. And through the course of this conversation, you've been giving me information that I can apply to my life. You've been giving information, new information and good information to young people who are starting their careers. Um, and, and information for people even in mid-career. And it's obvious that you're passionate and you've got a mission to continue to help people give that good information so that they can make good and wise decisions so they can have success in life. And I just want to say thank you for taking the time to chat with me today, uh, to share this, this great information. I can't wait for um, our listeners to be able to hear this and then have you guys back on the podcast again, you know, down the line and uh, see what, what else you've been learning and how you've been growing. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got lots more information to share. So I want to make sure that you've got time to go home and, take notes and get it all down, and then you can come back and give us some more. Well, it's been our pleasure. We thank you so much and look forward to a great future with you. Thank you, Jim and Kath. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Today's episode was engineered by Mitch White with graphic and marketing help by my daughter, Tristan Dickey. Special thanks to our guests, Jim and Kathy Pollan, for taking time to be with us. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, or if you're an Android user, check us out on Spotify. If you like the show, please share it with a friend and give us a review. That is always helpful and appreciated. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We'll be back later with more interviews with thought leaders, business owners, and entrepreneurs, the movers and shakers taking leaps in life in their careers to do interesting things, fostering change, and making the world a better place.